Here's another sketch. Uh, Stephen also wrote this one, um, and this one does SSTV, and it leverages our uh, DDS um, architecture as well. Um, and uh, SSTV is pretty complicated here, and the timing is really just critical. So this is a big challenge to try to get it synchronized and, and looking great on the display. Um, and it looks like he's got his tones um, defined here. And then this is the bitmap image for the SST, SSTV image. Now, I'd imagine that you could probably um, maybe uh, print characters to the buffer or do all kinds of interesting things. It really depends on how much RAM you've got. I mean, I'm just I'm going to do a quick multiplication here to see if you really could have enough memory. And it looks like maybe you might need, um, uh, you know, a mega or something like that really to to make that effective, but uh, I mean, that's about 5K. So might be a bit tight, but you might be able to create an image buffer for SSTV and then print characters to it. Now that would be something. Um, and you could send like a status image of uh, maybe different gauges and metrics or whatnot. Um, so anybody could request a, a graphic image to look at the status of something. Um, we'll kind of go through here. Um, here we're setting it to uh, an experimental frequency. Um, and then we got uh, uh, our frequency calculation table set up, and we're going to be doing Martin 1, <laughs> uh, which is pretty incredible to see on the Arduino. I have not seen this before. Um, so uh, that made our smiley face, and I'll show you where the bitmap stored. It's actually kind of neat. Um, so we'll kind of scroll through here, uh, and uh, we've got a function that loads the scan lines in. Uh, we've got a loop here. It looks like he's just playing the tone. So. DDS, it sounds really complicated, but really um, all you need to do is just play a tone. Uh, play weight, it looks like, is a, a great way to play a very accurate tone for a very specific length of time. Um, and it looks like he's just stacking these up, which uh, looks like it's pretty straightforward and simple here. Um, and then, uh, let's see, I, I don't know what uh, D on and D off do. Um, this looks like some very, very um, accurate uh, uh, timing that's taking place here. And it uh, looks like after it finishes sending the, uh, uh, the, the scan lines as it loops through, then, it, then it's, it's ready to go, and then it goes back to receive and, and waits 10 seconds. Um, let's see. So uh, this is an interrupt vector. I really don't know what he's uh, doing here. Um, it looks like there's a, a little bit of a clock uh, discrepancy, so he's kind of accounting for that. Now here's the fun part. And now uh, Stephen also has a little script that'll uh, take an image file and convert it to uh, um, one of these uh, bitmap images. But you can kind of see, um, this is probably where it says uh, CQ, CQ, ham shield. And I can kind of see the smiley face with these zeros here. Um, so uh, uh, we, we looked at this image earlier on the screen. You can go back and take a look, but uh, it's kind of neat. And he's got the lines annotated too. So uh, this is one of the neat little things you can do with the ham shield. Um, there's a million other things we can bring. Um, you can write your own sketches. You can create new technologies. The neat thing about it is that if you can get a, a digital mode such as SSTV working, you could actually make up a new digital mode. Um, I think that with uh, FM bandwidth, there might be more room to send more uh, complicated imagery, perhaps even faster. It's going to be really cool to see uh, what people will do to experiment with this. I mean, you could tweak this around and, and maybe make an entirely new SSTV mode uh, in a matter of a few minutes. So uh, this is really cool, and uh, I can't wait to see more from Steven. <laughs>